Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Anthony Hook, and I am doing a brief 10-15 uh, minute conversation with you on the VMware OS optimization tool for primarily for use in the Horizon Suite, but uh, we'll get into some other uses as well. So a little bit about me first. Um, I'm Anthony Hook. I'm a consulting engineer with Heartland Business Systems uh, in the Midwest. Uh, I'm a member of the V Brown Bag crew, and we are uh, putting on these tech talks for you, which are, I'm sure you probably already know, uh, they're live, they're recorded, you can catch them on YouTube later. Um, so all the other certifications uh, that aren't terribly important right now. So um, I've actually had a couple conversations with probably about a half dozen people here today, uh, not today, this week about the uh, OS optimization tool. Um, some people that haven't heard of it before, they've heard of it, they haven't tried it, uh, but they are v um, Horizon administrators. So I um, just want to talk with you about what it is, what it can do, how it can save you some time. Uh, it's one of my favorite tools. So what does it do? Um, this tool helps optimize Windows. Uh, you can use it on 7, 8, Server 2008, 2012, and 2010 was in beta. I think that might have gotten lifted. There was just a release a couple weeks ago that I haven't read the notes on yet. So um, current release was August 18th. So what, what does it do? Helps optimize Windows. What does that mean? Um, you use it on your uh, virtual desktop templates, and I'll get into that in a little bit. But you can use it on your virtual desktops, and it can help you increase your virtual desktop performance. Uh, VMware has some best practices published. Um, in years past, it was pages upon pages of uh, best practices, services to disable, registry keys that you need to put in. Um, after a while, somebody had made a batch file, and there was a batch file that you could use and run it on your desktop. Um, so you can use this instead of that now. Um, so it tunes your performance on your desktop, and if you're using RDSH servers, you can tune your performance a little bit better to follow the best practices. Um, I'm not going to read all these for you. You get you know, better performance. You can have higher density. Um, improves the desktop experience in general for the end users. Um, so this is an interface preview. It's an application that you run. You can see on the left-hand side there is a list of settings that get changed. The list on the right is uh, a description of what is actually being changed and whether or not it is being changed. So this is just a a, uh, just a preview of the interface. So what it can do for you, you can run it on a machine and you can locally analyze a machine. So you actually run it on the machine that you want to analyze. You can also analyze a remote machine as well. So if you run it on your laptop or your administration machine, you can target a machine and it will tell you whether or not uh, these best practices have been applied to it. You can also do, yeah, you can do a remote analysis. You cannot do a remote optimize. So when you want to actually optimize the machine, you have to run it locally. It saves a list of changes that you do make in a history on that machine. So if you make any changes and you realize you broke something or you broke an application in production, you can always roll your changes back and do a recompose or re-imaging or whatever solution you're using for that. And you can also uh, manage and create your own templates. It's got a list of templates that are built in for each operating system and all the best practices. If you find in your organization that you have some other requirements or you need to enable additional things or disable more additional things, you can actually roll your own templates. The requirements are pretty easy. Uh, Windows 7, Windows 8, Server 2008 R2, Server 2012, and Windows 10 support is in beta. That might be lifted, I don't remember. And uh, .NET Service Framework, .NET Framework 3.5 Service Pack 1. So pretty much any machine. Um, for example, the Windows 7 settings, uh, each template has a list of modifications and they're organized by group. So you can look at what is it actually changing in the registry? What is it actually changing in different parts of the registry? What features is it disabling? Uh, scheduled tasks like Windows Disk Defrag. You don't need to do Disk Defrag in a virtual environment. Uh, certain services, Windows Update services, visual effects that aren't necessary. Um, I've heard of some people that don't disable that. Uh, they want the extra little bit of flashiness, but that's not something um, it's not something that's recommended. You don't really get great performance out of it. 
So this is a little close up of the interface. You can see on the left hand side, there are you know the registry settings, the visual effects and things that get enabled and disabled. And you can see exactly what it's doing. Um, and you can make your own templates, like I said, and, and put additional things in. It's all documented very well. So if you want to see exactly what it's doing, the graph on the top, when you do an analysis, it'll tell you the different um, the optimizations applied. So it'll tell you what are mandatory that you need for Horizon, the optional and the recommended. So it'll tell you, you know, you have this done already or you don't have this done. And you can look by category. And then when you actually do a remediation on the bottom right, it'll tell you what was, what was succeeded in being changed and any failure. So if you have something fail to make that change, you can, you can look at the log and see exactly what failed. Some best practices, of course. Um, use the tool on a clean image. You don't, want to, you don't want to take an image that you've already done a lot of customizations to. Uh, primarily, you want a, a brand new clean image that you run this on just for, just for best performance. Make sure you're not bringing in any old garbage because if you, if you bring in garbage, you're still probably going to have garbage. So you obviously want to use it on a system that has been built to match the configuration that you're going to deploy. Uh, that just makes sense. Um, you want to, the goal of this is to disable as many unnecessary Windows components that don't cause any uh, conflicts in your system. So um, test it, test it, test it, of course, always test it. Um, the best practice is to actually disable pretty much everything. What I like to do is, is run the tool and disable everything across the board and then test every application to make sure they still work. If they still work, wonderful. You don't have to do any more changes. Uh, if you do break something, you can always look and, and kind of you know, dial it back a little bit. But I like to start, start fully optimized and dial anything back if, if, uh, if it's needed. Yes, it does work on physical machines. I've had some clients ask me, this tool is great. We can make changes across the board. Uh, when we do imaging with other solutions, SCCM, whatever other solutions, yes, you can run it on a physical machine on your, on your capture image to make whatever changes your organization decides that they want to use on your templates. And uh, just the same, you can roll it out on, on that environment as well. So where to get it? It's a VMware Fling. If you're not familiar with Flings, they are uh, written by VMware employees. They're, there's a disclaimer that you should read. They're not to be used in production. Um, they're to be used in labs. But what's interesting is in the latest version of VMware's documentation on Horizon, they actually reference, yes, use this fling. Um, it's something I use for production. So if they, if they reference it and they say use this in production, then, then I've, I feel like it's OK. That's my opinion. So there's a white paper. I'll leave that URL up if you want to look at the white paper on it and find out any more information that I might have missed or forgot. Otherwise, that's all I've got. It's a little bit short, but thanks for your time.